So beginner editors are really struggling with the art of keyframing. What do we do? Well, I guess it's time to take the matter into our own hands. What does that even mean? It means that in today's video, I'm gonna teach you five different ways that you can level up your keyframing. If you're ready, let's jump on in. So first, let's define what is keyframing. In Premiere Pro for video editing, it's essentially defining a change in value from one point to another point over time. So the cool thing about keyframing is that once you understand how it works, you can apply it to almost any effect inside of Premiere Pro. Let's take a look. Before getting into the fun stuff, we first need to show you all the ways you can use keyframes in Premiere Pro. So here I have a stock footage clip of this old lady and she's holding a transparent picture frame. We're gonna start down here in the timeline. If we expand the layer size enough, we can see this line on both the audio and the video track. If you don't see this, click on the wrench icon and enable show video keyframes. Same for the audio. By default, what this line represents is the opacity of the video. For audio, it is the volume. Now let's say I want the empty frame to reveal a picture of some keys. Cause you know, keyframe. I'll plop in this picture under the lady and position it to fit the frame. To add a keyframe on this line, simply hold command or control on windows and click on where you want the keyframe to be. So one at the start and one here where I want it to be fully revealed. Now I can pick the first keyframe point and drag it down. When I hit play, the key is slowly reveal itself. I can do the same with audio to make the music get louder along with the keys revealing. If you want to keyframe something else in the timeline, you can right click on the small effects icon here. You can change what parameter you want to modify with this line. But if you want more control, we got to jump to the effect controls. You can see the keyframing that we did in the timeline reflected here in effect controls. We could also keyframe everything else here too, just by clicking the stopwatch icon in front of whatever parameter you want to start keyframing. Once the stopwatch is enabled, any changes you make will automatically make a keyframe. I could also keyframe any additional effects that I add here too. For example, I can add this blur and keyframe it so the key starts off blurry and slowly becomes more in focus in addition to the opacity reveal that we already did. Now with all the basics out of the way, now it's time for some fun. Keyframing your mask is the key to creating so many fun edits inside of Premiere. Let's start with a simple text reveal or a typing effect. First, let's type out a made up comment that totally is not biased. From effect controls, we can scroll down to the opacity and click this to create a square mask. From the program panel, hold shift and drag out the corner to resize the mask. Let's click the stopwatch in front of the mask path to create a keyframe. Now move the playhead to the start of the clip and move the mask off to the side so all the text will disappear. A new keyframe is now automatically created here. Now let's add some sound effects. It seems a little too fast. To make it slower, I can just drag out the second keyframe here so it takes longer over time to reveal that text. Great, so now let's try something more complex. I'll be recreating this text animation. To do this, we'll be keyframing the position of the text, but not the mask. Here I have all three texts separated in their own layers. First, we need to create the moving up motion of the text. The key here is to keyframe the position of the text and not the whole clip. So in the text transform options, just hit the stopwatch in front of position to lock in the final location of the text. Then we can move the playhead over to where you want the animation to start and move the text down. To make the movement smoother, I can select the keyframes, right click, select temporal interpolation, and let's go with ease in. This will make the text movement faster towards the beginning and then slowly ease into the final position. If I would have selected ease out, it would do the opposite. I suggest you play around with all of these different options to get a feel for how it affects the motion, the movement between the keyframes. And now I'm going to repeat the same for all the other text layers. All right, so here's where the magic happens. In effect controls, scroll down to opacity add a square mask. Let's resize it 
and move it up so the bottom border of the mask is right under the text. Now when we play, the text will pop out out of thin air. And just do the same for the smaller text above, and we get this. Is that somebody at the door? Give me a sec. Okay, so let me tell you about today's sponsor, Motion Can. Motion Can wants me to tell you guys that they're giving away three exclusive licenses to their Toko Graphics Pack, exclusive to the Premiere Gal audience. Toko Graphics Pack comes with an insane amount of motion graphics, animations, transitions, and much more. What's even cooler is that it now comes with even more content and it works with a newly redesigned and refurbished Motion Pro panel, which is a free plugin that works inside of Premiere Pro. This means that you can use the Toko Graphics Pack with the panel and you can easily customize it inside of Premiere. With this new update, everything has been optimized to be faster and the install is much easier. Personally, I love that the animations play back smoother. If you wanna be one of the three lucky people to win one of the Toko Graphics licenses, just leave your best editor's comment in the comment section below and click the link in the description box to fill out the form to enter. Oh, I think she's coming back. Got a dip. Big thanks to Motion Can for sponsoring the video. Well, I think somebody is trolling me or something because nobody was at the door. Back to keyframing. Having your video go through speed changes can take your already cool footage and make it even cooler. Let's go back to the timeline for this one. Like I showed you before, you can change this line to anything that's keyframable. Keyframable? I think that's a word. Let's pick time remapping. With this, you could keyframe where the speed changes. For example, I have this cool skateboard shot. What if I want the jump to be in slow motion? I can hold command or control and click on where I want the slow motion to start and also when it will go back to normal speed. Now, in between these two keyframes, I can move the line down. The percentage showing up here is the speed. Right now, it's not that different from just cutting the video and lowering the speed like usual. However, what makes time remapping more special is that you can make the speed changes more gradual with ramps. I can click and hold on the keyframe handle and drag it outwards or inwards. The further apart they are, the more gradual the speed change happens. Let's see the result. Let's jump on to the audio side of things. For audio tracks, you can keyform more than the volume, for example, the panning and other audio effects. For this demo, I have some more sick skateboard footage. I also added some sound effects to fit the scene. Right now, it sounds kind of dull. So as a sound designer, we first have to imagine what the sound will sound like if it was being recorded there on the scene with the camera. This means that if the skateboarder is farther away, then the sound is more quiet. For this, I can do the simple keyframing of the volume, making the sound effects louder in sync with the footage. Simple enough, right? The next step is to keyframe the panning. For anyone that doesn't know what panning is, it's essentially moving the audio sound from the left to the right. A perfect example of this is Charlie Puth's song, Left and Right. And now you know what the meaning of the song is. Back to the demo. The skateboard also moves from the left of the frame to the right and back to the left again. This means we need to keyframe the panning accordingly. So making this number positive will move the sound to the right and negative for the left. Now put on some headphones and let's give it a listen. Sick. Although anyone without headphones or stereo speakers right now is probably super confused. Now let's also keyframe some audio effects. Here I added some music to the shot. For the buildup before the skateboard reaches the peak, I want to do a pitch rise effect. First, cut the song right here before the drop. Then throw in the pitch shifter effect to the front portion. In effect controls from pitch shifter, let's expand the individual parameters. We'll be keyframing the transpose ratio. Move the playhead to the end of the clip and let's hit stopwatch. Now move back to the start and let's lower the pitch down with the slider. When we play this back, we should get this fun trippy pitch rise effect leading into the drop. So this is probably one of the most common ways to use keyframing, which is to make one object follow another object, like this. 
You should already know by now, after watching this video, how to keyframe the position of an object. So for now, we're gonna focus on the pro tips to make this process even easier. First off, it's way faster and easier to move the object inside of the program window. If double clicking on the object in the program window doesn't work for you, just select the layer, go to the effect controls panel and select motion on the top. There should now be handles around your object here. And that means you can move the object around, resize it, and even rotate it right inside of the program window. With motion still selected, the next tip is to move the anchor point of the object to the spot that will be connecting with what is following. With this, you will be able to rotate and resize the object easier without having to reposition it every time. The last tip is in the way you choose to place the keyframe. The most common way editors do it is placing a keyframe at the start and the end, and then start filling the in-betweens. So this method works well for shorter segments because it's lacking purpose, but let me show you a better method for longer segments that have lots of moving directions. First, you should observe the movement of what you're following. And instead of placing keyframes randomly, we want our first batch of keyframes to be where the movement has a big shift in speed or change in direction. And then you could start adding the in-betweens. You could also use the ease in and out that we've touched on before to make the movement smoother. But the key is to reference from the movement that you're following. If my hand moves to the right quickly and then slowly comes to a stop, try using ease in to get the same movement. To go even deeper, you can click this small arrow in front of the position and adjust the curves of the keyframes manually. Here, you could create your own ease in, out, or something even crazier. Just don't forget to observe the movement we're following and not just create a bunch of random curves for no reason. Getting more familiar with keyframing will unlock more possibilities inside of that editing head. And now that you're an intermediate keyframer, the next thing to do is to stay creative and as always, keep creating better video with Gap. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.